Welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's video we shall remove our crafting system and we shall replace it with a new one. We have a crafting table which well you could have whatever type of actor you want it to have. I just reused the chest. Uh, you can change the mesh to whatever you like but well if we place some items in it we can start crafting those. So we can create ourselves some logs. Uh, some planks actually because those are the craftable ones then if we add I believe it was four planks Yeah, with four planks we can create one crate and that's exactly what we just did So that's basically it and let's begin So before we begin I found a, an issue in the backpack I thought I fixed it and I think I mentioned it in one of the videos But well, I have this issue right now uh, maybe that's because of I have so many backups and I do tend to come back to them. So maybe uh, I fixed this issue in a different version of the system. But well, in our backpack on the remove items function uh, over here, if we go to the find stack over here, this is how it should look like. And this is how it looked for me. So I had it like this. That's not the way we want it to. We want the local items amount to be at the bottom and the find stack amount to be at the top. And exactly the same thing uh, should be in our third person character as well. So if we would go to our third person character, open up our remove items function, which is over here, you can see that the local item amount is at the bottom and find stack is at the top. And it's like this for all of these. So once we have that out of the way, let's start creating our crafting bench. So what I will do is reuse the BP chest because I want to store some items in the crafting table while I'm crafting. So this thing already does what we need it to do. So we're going to save time and just duplicate that and call this BP crafting table. Let's open this up. Obviously you can change it to whatever mesh you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, what does matter is that we select our equip backpack and make it publicly available so instance editable should be enabled and also what I want to do is modify our buy items function a little bit because um, we will have situations where we just simply want to remove a specific amount specific amount from the slot and also maybe a bunch of items so that the system would find them on their own so I will disconnect the amount and recombine recombine the pins and from the index I want to check if this is equal to minus one so whenever we're going to be using a remove items function we're going to specify the index minus one so we can then do an if on this one to check whether we have a specific ID or no if we don't have a specific index then on true route we can just simply from our backpack we can remove the item and connect the execution to true and the item comes from the input now for the remove amount at index reconnect your pin to the false the execution one and for the amount we can then break our s slot structure and plug in the amount so now whenever we provide minus one at the index it's going to use our remove item function so that should be good now one more small detail is probably here at the top on begin play you want to resize your uh, backpack mine is at 30 slots right now I'm gonna change it to 12 because I don't feel like having 30 slots for the crafting bench now one more thing in our event start interaction we are saving this actor as our interactable and creating our inventory widget for the position I want to use crafting instead so I'm typing crafting and now let's sort out some of the switches that now we should have because we have another position for our widgets so let's select our widget so we have our UI inventory let's pop that open first thing that I want to do immediately right off the bat is replace this um, so I actually recorded this video already, but I had an issue. Uh, this thing right now should be a border for you. What you want to do is right click this, replace with a scroll box. Instantly, as soon as you do that, it's going to remove is variable. So make sure you check that this is variable and recompile this. Then we can go to the graph. If you recompile this, everything should be good over here. If not, it's going to show you another shop panel. Make sure you reconnect your pins to that one. But well, for me, everything worked out just fine this time. Next on the switch, we want to add a new pin, which is now our crafting pin. And the crafting, for the most part, will go exactly the same route as the chest does. So for the crafting is valid. And then at the end of it all, what we want to do is do an if branch because we want to do this only specifically for our crafting. So let's get the position and let's check if the position is equal to our crafting position 
then let's plug in the execution, uh, the condition, and then from the true route, from the execution, we can create a widget, uh, which we don't have right now. So um, let's leave it be. All, all I'm just gonna do is get my scroll box, so shop panel, and add a child to that, and the content is going to be the return value. So we're gonna come back to this in a second once we create the widget, and then we are going to populate this. Now let's go to our let's start let's start with the amount selection, UI amount selection, and in the graph we have another switch that needs another pin. So new pin and call this crafting. Again, goes the same way as the chest goes. So make sure you check where your chest goes and make sure you reconnect it to the same location. Then the next one is our UI confirm by. Again, in the graph we have a switch which needs a new crafting pin which then goes the same way as the chest over here. So this, all of this should be just fine by default. Now we also need to go to our move item in the third person character, which again needs the switch entries. So we have the crafting, which then goes the same way as the chest again. And the same thing once more, crafting goes the same way as our chest does. And here at the end, we have another switch, which I already have added the crafting to. So make sure you add it and it goes the same way as the chest does. So that should be good. So now items, sh you should be able to move items back and forward. Uh, they should technically be displayed. Uh, what isn't going to be displayed is the crafting possibilities because we don't have the widget for that. So let's go ahead and let's create a new widget. Let's call this UI crafting. Let's open this up and before we do anything in this, let's go back to our UI inventory and here on the construct widget, let's use our UI crafting. There we go. So we are done with the UI inventory. Now let's go back to our UI crafting. And over here, I'm going to add a couple of things. So first I will add a border for the background. Make sure this is set to full screen so that it takes the whole space it has. The brushes tint again is going to be black with 0.3 in the opacity. Then let's add another element to this, which then in my case is going to be a scroll box just so that we can scroll our uh, craftables. Everything will be left by default. And also I want to add a uniform grid panel to this and I want to rename this. So we, I'm going to call this items grid. Let's make sure this is a variable and in the top left corner alignment like so. Now for the slot sizing and padding, I'm going to use the half values of what I used for my regular slots. So the padding in this case is going to be five and this is going to be 64, I believe was this half size. Oh, well, at least very similar to that. So that's going to be good. Th that's basically so that I can just see the difference between the slots. Otherwise, um, there's not going to be that visible because I don't have a different styling for my different slots. And also make sure that you replace your canvas panel with a child. So right click your canvas panel and replace with child. So now that the border would be the parent. So now in our event graph on the event construct, what we want to do first is cast to our character. So now once we have casted to the character, the object should be the get owning, owning player pawn. There we go. And then we want to promote this to a variable, which I'm going to call player ref. And well, that's basically it for now. Now, the next thing we need to get the data table row names so that this would return us all the possible items that we might have. So we will loop through all of those just to check every single item. And then we want to get the data table row, that one specific one that we are at right now. Make sure to select your database. So now what we can do from this one is break our out row. So our inventory structure so that we would get the data about that one specific item. And over here, what we want to do first is check whether we can actually craft this. So can craft do an if branch on that one. And then if that is true, then we need a new variable for this one because I want to make sure that I count how many items I have found. So let's call this um, 
items found uh, and that is basically on the items that are in the recipe how many items I can find in the crafting table itself uh, obviously this uh, variable needs to be an integer because we want to count things so let's set this first to zero so that at the beginning it's always reset back to zero and then we can do a loop depending on the recipe so on the recipe we can do a loop so we do that plug the execution in and at this point we would need to receive the information about what kind of items are in inside of our crafting table but well right now we can't so we need to add a couple of new functions for that let's go to our base content folder uh, where I have my AI interaction which is one of the interfaces uh, that the chests and AIs and all that stuff have um, and we need a new function over here because well I want to let's call this retrieve stacks and for this one we need a single input which is going to be the item which we want to look for which is the s slots structure type then for the outputs we need two of them first we need the let's call this items uh, this is going to be our quick slots I'm not sure whether we are going to use those but well we will receive these from the built-in function inside of our backpack so we might provide that as well um, and another thing is the amount which is an integer so that we know how many items we have uh, one thing though the quick slots should be an array because it is going to return us an array uh, we're going to set this up in a second let's continue with our UI crafting where we actually need this so first let's get our players reference from the players reference we need to get our interactable reference so that we know which uh, crafting bench it is that we are interacting with and from the interactable then we can retrieve the stacks message there we go plug that in so for the item itself we want to use the one from the arrays uh, from the loop from the recipe loop so there we go we have that and then we want to check whether this amount that we have found in the crafting whether this amount is bigger or equal well to the amount that is required in the recipe so let's break the arrays element and let's check this uh, to this amount that that we need so the amount that we have should be bigger or equal to the amount that we need then we can do an if branch check on this one using this uh, integer check as the condition and now if this is true if we, su if we succeed on this one we want to get our items found and we want to do a plus plus increment integer because we want to add one more unit because we found one unit then the next thing would be another if branch check because well we want to check whether the items found are equal uh, to the amount that is needed and how to get the amount that is needed how to know is by dragging from the recipe and getting its length and the length should be equal to the items found we should be able to find the same amount of items so once we got that the next thing that we can do is use this as a condition and once we have used that as a condition we can then create a widget and this widget well I'm gonna use my UI craftable not crafting not the one that we just created but the one that we were using previously which basically contains the icon and the whole uh, that stuff so for the amount we want to use the outcraft amount from our structure so the outcraft amount so that's basically the amount that we are going to receive the item data is the item data from the get data table row this one right here and for the row name it's one further it's from the loop so the array element and well this code should look something like this for now now one more thing that we need to do is we need to specify, specify the rows and columns inside of the grid panel that we we have right here so we have the grid panel and to make life a little bit more simpler I'm just gonna go to my UI inventory panel and I already have the code over there so all I'm just gonna simply do is copy this whole bunch except for the grid node and the create widget node I'm just gonna copy the bottom part and these grid selection things and back in our UI crafting I can just paste those in so now connect the execution the target is our grid panel so item grid is the target and the content is the widget that we just created now we need to promote our slots created so let's create that and then we also need to uh, create our slots per row so let's do that as well and here at the top we have a missing input and that should be our slots created 
There we go. So this is now going to calculate the rows and columns just fine for us. The last thing to specify, compile and specify your slots per row. In my case, I'm just going to use five. So that should be all and it should be fully functioning now. It should show up uh, the items that we can craft depending on what kind of items we have placed inside of our crafting table. Now, the last thing in our crafting table is actually to retrieve the stacks, which we don't do as of right now. So let's go to our BP craftable, uh, crafting table. And in our interfaces now, we have the retrieve stacks. So inside of here, in the retrieve stacks, let's get our backpack. And over here, we can now just use the uh, return stacks. And this requires us to have the S slots input, like so. And it gives out the execution, the quick slots, and the total amount on the player. So now this should be just fine. So now if we would give it a go, open this up, add some items, you can see, boom, we can craft the planks. And if we add five of these, we should be able to craft craft the weapons. There we go. So we have that. Uh, don't mind that I have 15 logs per stack. Uh, technically you should have only four, but well, I cheated a little bit with that one specific backpack. So that is all good. Now the last thing left for us to do is actually craft those things. So I'm just gonna go to my UI craftable. So this is the icon that is getting displayed on the screen. I've already done some mechanics uh, about it uh, because like I said, I already I al already recorded this video, but well, I'm just gonna start from scratch and remove everything. So let's begin. It is actually very similar to what it was before. There's just very slight changes, but well, I'm just going to remove the previous version completely and I'm just going to have the crafting bench from now on. And so the first thing that we want to do is get our item data in and we want to get the, we want to break the structure so that we could get the recipe and all of that stuff. So let's open this up. And over here, what we want to do is first do a loop through the recipe because obviously, uh, let's do the loop with the break because obviously at this point, all the items are already craftable because we checked for that in the UI crafting. So let's do a loop through all of our crafting recipes. And then we want to get our player's reference. And from the player, we want to get our interactable. So we have our interactable and as our interactable, we want to, again, we want to retrieve our stacks message. So let's plug that in and let's plug in the item itself as well. And over here, we want to check once more just to be safe, whether the amount that we have is bigger or equal to the amount that is needed. So let's do that check once more, just in case maybe some player has removed an item or two. So we got to make sure that the this information is still live, still active, uh, because technically, well, somebody could do something. Meanwhile, while we are thinking whether we craft or don't, don't and then these items might might be gone. So let's let's just ha let's just be safe and do a double check. Let's do an if then on that one. And for this one, then we need a local variable, which I already have the local fail. And so on the false, we shall check this to be true. And then from this one, we can just simply break the loop and be done with this because, well, we want this to succeed. We always want to have plenty of items in the crafting table uh, so that we can actually craft these items. So that should be something like this. Now, the next thing from the completion of the loop, we want to do another if and the condition is going to be our local fail. And in this case, uh, this should be false. If we want to succeed and continue with this thing, this should return as true. Otherwise, well, we have completely failed. So on false, we can then get our player's reference first. And from that one, we can add the add item. So true to add item. And for the item, we're just going to make this on our own. So let's make the slot structure and let's make the item data table row handle as well for the database select my database and for the row name we want to plug in our row name from over here now for the amount we want to use our outcraft amount from the item data so now we can uh, recombine that to make it so that it takes less space and it should look something like this in the end then from our add item on the success we can do an if because, well, we want to see if we actually were able to add the item to our inventory, whether we had plenty of space. And if we did have plenty of space, then what we can do is just simply, again, get our item data. And then we want to break the structure again and do a loop for the recipe. So loop for each on the recipes, plug that into the true route like so. 
and then from over here again we want to get our players reference we want to get our interactables reference and then as our player we want to run a function called server by items so this is just for the multiplayer if you are running a single player you can just directly run your buy items interface but well since this is a multiplayer we want to run this through a ser uh, event which is ran on server so the first target is our player the second target is our interactable then for the index well in this case we want to provide this minus one so that it would find the items on its own we're not going to specify a specific slot and for the item itself we can just use the array element then once we are done with this again let's get our players reference and then we can as our player we can refresh our inventory widget plug in the execution into the complete and for the position use our newly created crafting position there we go now one more thing this on click event requires you to have like to give it like an answer so we always must provide the return node well, not always, but in very, very many occasions. So for the return value, we can just make the event reply like so. I'm just going to copy this. And so the true goes in here. Then I'm going to copy once more. The false comes in here. And then once more after the refresh widget. Don't add on the loop. The loop shouldn't have an ending because loops ending is this completion, not this one. This is not the end of the loop. This is the end of the loop. So. Um, that's about it so let's give it a go and let's see how this works so I have a bunch of logs bunch of axes so let's see so we need two logs four planks so it should leave me with two logs and there we go we have only two logs left and I spent all of them as well so that's basically it this is our crafting system uh, you can change this to whatever you like and well we're gonna have some more extra features for this one in the future so thank you for watching and I see you in the next one peace